and I'm always wanting to share the tools, the techniques, the, the lifestyle, all of these types of benefits because it's helped me immensely in my life. And so I know a lot of people can also benefit. So um, this is kind of our goal is just to get the word out, to try to share these, these tools and technologies with people um, so that you can uplift your life, you can uplift your uh, community, you know, your relationships, and that's how we help the world. You know, um, I think we all want to live in a peaceful, joyful, healthy environment and world. Um, so, you know, how do we do that? We have to take care of ourselves. And just by doing that, you have more capacity to help others. So that's, that's kind of the basics of how this works. And you, so you guys are in VIP or who's in VIP? All finished. You finished yeah, it? I finished, yeah. And I was finished? 16. Oh, excellent. So you guys have yeah. all finished VIP. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Myself, I, I only have finished Discovery so far. And then when Breakthrough came up, I had an event that I was uh, supporting at the studio, a channeling event. So we always have events and workshops and things, and I teach on the weekends too. So I'll, uh, I'll get there someday, but I wanted to commend you on that. I know, you know, if you're doing that type of work, you're doing this inner work, you know, looking at your habits, your reactions or uh, rackets or, you know, lifestyle stuff and your ambitions and goals. And, and you know, when I was in Discovery, and I've, I've had so many friends that have gone all the way through VIP and I kind of understand that process to some extent. Uh, you know, I, I haven't been immersed in that, that level of uh, work and... Um, and I appreciate the community outreach aspect of it, especially. But, um, you know, when I was in it and, I'm, you know, we're doing these, what, what I would call, it's like a meditation, you know, it's kind of like a hypnosis, or a hypnotherapy. You're, you're doing this guided meditation. You're um, looking at yourself, your emotions, your past relationships, and everyone's hugging and kind of communing. And... That type of thing is, is also, there's a lot of parallels to what we do in Kundalini Yoga. Um, one of the, the differences would be, you know, we also have these physical techniques. We have the breath patterns, the, uh, you know, the visualizations and meditations. There's a lot of similarities there. Then we are also stretching the body, um, taking care of the body, and we're also learning, um, you know, dietary things like, yogic uh, herbal things for healing and detoxing and for nutrition, things like that. So where you get this, this bit of, of the process with like self-help uh, types of, you know, leadership trainings and things, this is kind of like the whole package. That's, that's kind of like how, how Beth describes it. That's how I would describe it as well. You know, we, we know that we need to be healthy and have a, just have a sense of well-being. You have to have your energy going, you know. You get up, you have these goals, you want to you wanna get them accomplished. So how do you do it? You have to be in an uplifted mental state. You have to, you know, when we do these meditations, we do these breathing and exercises, moving around and, you know, getting that energy flowing. Then you can apply that to whatever goals you have, whatever you're trying to create in your life. So does that, does that make sense? Um, I don't want to, I don't want to just lecture at you. I want to hear also a little bit more of your uh, experience or, or questions or specific goals that you might have. So within Kundalini Yoga, um, right before I start class, I'd like to explain. So Kundalini has been around for a thousand plus years, hasn't it, Alex? Or seven, yeah. Yeah, I would say millennia. Yeah. So it was around forever and kept a very big secret, like this little treasure that 
only like sages and please like chime in wherever but sages royal you had to really be something to even be exposed to kundalini yoga and the west was not even exposed to it or at least the united states until yogi bhajan um took it brought it over in 1969 so it's a young yoga to the United States, but it's extremely old. And there's actually, the, the reason I too, I believe there's an underlying magic to it. And so with what Sadhanam saying, with like your personal goals, personal beliefs, if you are ignited from inside, like we're learning through, through VIP, we learn so much from the outside that helps inside our brain with recreating our thought patterns and getting to do things instead of having to do things. Kundalini kind of takes it to a next step and inviting mantra into it to literally use almost this magic in regards to like your dreams, your aspirations, so much of like what VIP was taking and working with and doing these awesome things. Kundalini not just has that, but takes another perspective and allows you to use your body to really change the way you're thinking through breath, through mantra, through movement. And so just through that perspective, I feel like, like I was talking to Paul so often through, cause Paul was my coach through VIP. I was always talking about Kundalini cause that's my grounding. That's my stone. And the more we talked, um, Paul was interested and you guys were potentially, um, I know there was a snowstorm, but going to come down for the Huckleberry house. And I felt like there was kind of an unanswered question and, and, um, yeah, this, this thing is so big. I just wanted you guys to have the opportunity to hear about what this actually is, not just for the impact of me, but how to use it for yourselves to continue to with your empowering journey. And so Sadhana, um, yeah, I just wanted to explain a little bit more on what it means to me, but Sadhana, I didn't mean to take it over. No, you're, that's okay. Basically, you know, the golden days, these things were secret. They were, you know, you had to be the disciple of a, and then in particular, Kriya, a meditation, because of how powerful it is to raise your energy up. Then, you know, you're becoming self-realized. You're, you know, becoming empowered. And then you have this energy flowing, this Kundalini, you have the power to, you know, become a, a, a ruler or, or to, to take over or to, and that was so powerful that these were kept secret for thousands of years. And Yogi Bhajan, who's kind of the, the master teacher of our lineage, he's the one who brought it to the United States and started going to hippie music festivals and teaching this to, to all the people in the 70s. And he was a revolutionary in that aspect that he said, we all need to uplift ourselves, not just those royalty, those warriors, those gurus, all of us need to be empowered. And it's, it's the same kind of thing, like, like what you do in VIP, you're being empowered. But what, what I think is really important is to get the physical aspect. You know, we did, we did some dancing and that's, that's good. Uh, we danced in Kundalini too. That's the good, uh, exercise to get into liberation and get energy flowing but you know these are the teachings of master yogis sages uh the teachings of yogi bhajan who um like i said you know he's kind of like we don't and i just to give you a caveat here it's not like we don't like worship yogi bhajan you know we wear head coverings and things and there's certain like we wear white and it's, it's all just part of the technology that is optional, but can enhance your energy and your practice. But there's no like obligation or anything, but you know, he taught this technology and then, you know, millions of people have adopted it uh, all around the world where they have these teacher trainings and they've been able to unlock this power. And it's, it's something, it's like brushing your teeth. It's something you want to do every day because, you know, every day you want to put your best foot forward. You want to have your highest energy, your most uplifted mindset and be focused. You know, if you ever experience like you're trying to focus on some goal or get doing something and then the attention wanders and you get distracted, you forget what you're doing and then you're doing something else and then you, and you forget and you make mistakes, you know, 
the the idea of focusing your mind and your energy through these these meditations and things is that you have more capacity to focus on your goals and things when you need to. So you know when we were going through all of these uh, guided meditations and things and and focusing our intentions, I was I was sitting there in, in discovery and I was like, oh, this is like what I teach every day. You know, every just about every morning. I'm out there and I'm, you know, we're getting centered, we're breathing, you know, we're focusing on our intentions. And then we're moving the body because, you know, you get the tension out of your body. You can be, you just feel, you know, you get things flowing and it's, it's really essential. Um, you know, the amount that you breathe determines, you know, every cell in your body needs this oxygen. So your brain needs it, you know, the, even the position of your neck and your shoulders and things has a huge impact on your mental functions, your emotional, you know, feelings and mood and things. So, you know, practicing all that stuff just has huge potential to really enhance and uh, kind of support those goals and things if that makes sense. So I know, you know, when people think of yoga, they think of like stretching, right? That's or like flexibility or balance or strength. And um, all of that is, is really like the tip of the iceberg because then you have like, like I'm saying, these kind of psychological, mental strengthening attention span. You have like energetic things where it's really, it you know, has a lot of potential to be a really transformational thing. So, you know, uh, we have like the teacher training that, that Beth had mentioned. We have workshops, and uh, just to just to kind of give you you know some of your options for how you can start to uh, try out or practice these types of things um, at our studio, uh, which is called Elevate Yoga and Healing Arts, so formerly known as El Yoga Flow. Um, you can get your first week free. So, you know, there's no obligation or anything. You can just drop in and we'll get you set up with your account and you can try out any number of different types of classes for unlimited for a week. And um, then there's like a continuation where if you wanted to get another free week, uh, if you any purchase of like uh, $20 or more, you get another free week. And so we have like herbal supplements, hemp oil and jewelry and things that are available um, that also helps to assist you in that overall health and vitality and well-being. So I want to uh, open up the floor again if you guys have um, comments or any questions or anything that may have come up. I'm just going to ask, what would be like, what's like one little thing or like one little exercise or something that would be very, very good for like just starting out. Yeah. So when I, when I first started practicing um, and I, I like Beth, I had also been practicing other forms of yoga in college and my courses for like five years. And then I started doing Kundalini. And one of the things that really got me hooked um, kind of really resonated with me and really helped me a lot in my life was a particular sequence called the basic spinal energy series. And I had a video. It's a really fun video uh, with Anna Brett and Ravi Singh. And you always tune in with this mantra and you start doing these different uh, spinal flexes and things. Um, I have a little video I can send you with, uh, even simpler couple of exercises, like a couple of my favorite things, because I was, uh, you know, playing guitar and a, a lot. I used to like play in some local bands and you're just standing there like, like for hours and hours and hunching over and like my back would get sore. So I started doing this Kriya um, where you're flexing the spine and then you're twisting and you're doing these neck rolls that are just, back rolls and the neck rolls are two of my favorite things because you know when you take care of your body your body gives you the energy takes care of your mind and then you can take care of your life 
So it's like you're rolling on your back, you're getting the tension out of your back, you're getting everything flowing and detoxing, and then the neck rolls, you're getting like circulation to your brain improved and getting any tension out of the neck muscles. So those are a couple of my favorite ones that I can send you a little video. And, um, and then there's a larger sequence. It's only like 10 exercises or something, but it's considered one of the most fundamental uh, sequences or kriyas. And um, that was the first one that I did uh, with a 40-day sadhana, which is, uh, you know, like I said, this is this daily maintenance of your energy and your body. Uh, and we, we do like what we call a 40-day sadhana where you commit to a particular meditation or exercise or sequence that you choose or that a teacher assigns to you. Um, and when you do it every day for 40 days, you can actually see as your flexibility improves, as you progress, as you get uh, more energy, better mental function, that Kriya specifically uh, improves your memory because you're moving the cerebrospinal fluid that is linked to all of these mood and memory uh, functions. Um, so, you know, I had heard about the 40 day practices. And when I first did that one, I can tell you all of the hype was true because I experienced major transformation in my life. Just doing that like 20, 30 minute Kriya every morning, suddenly I started getting invited to teach yoga and do these workshops at like big conventions and things like just just the, when i started doing that it was um probably 2010 or 11 and out of the blue i got invited to uh the gift of light expo to teach a workshop on uh and i and i ended up doing this chakra balancing which is another one of my favorite meditations uh and then by you know, one of the lead organizer kind of looked into the room and saw what we were doing and she felt like she was transported to like Tibet and she heard everyone chanting together and vibrating the sacred sounds. And she invited me to go up on the mic and lead it for the entire convention. At, you know, the entire like con convention center at um, Vets Memorial and which was just like, next level of, of uh, energetic uh, connection with everyone. So um, I'll, se I'll send you some links if uh, that can connect us on uh, email, some text thread or something. I just want to say real quick, um, I get to I'm at work right now, so I get to get back to work. Uh, but thank you, Beth. Thank you, uh, Sadhanam. I'm sure I, I will be talking to you all very soon again. Uh, are you Jansen? Yes, I'm Jansen. Yeah, good to meet you, brother. Awesome. Have a I'll see you guys later. See ya. Hi, Jansen. So just... Um, off of what Sadhanam was saying too, and what we learned through Next Level VIP that so much of our life really is energy, universal energy in what we were learning through VIP. But the Kundalini energy is working with this energy found at the base of the spine, using breathing, et cetera, to move that energy. And so often in our society- A coiled serpent. Beautiful, yes. So, I know what it's about. Are you reading about it then? Um, I have in the past because I've came across like artwork and stuff like of somebody in the lotus pose uh, meditating and the snake rising from his base and the cobra coming over his head. And since then, I was always curious of, like what that was and found it was Kundalini. And then I started reading more and more about it. And yeah, so I'm very interested in this. <laughs> so e even to go off of that with the energy you're moving up so much of our society is burdened by different forms of illnesses, disease, sickness. And a lot of that is behind blockages and prana energy not moving in your body or your system. So Kundalini is this powerful, it just, it helps with moving it literally throughout your body. And you, you figure that out through yoga, but through Kundalini, you take it even further and you literally 
from my experience, you can feel it and see it in your body through the practice. Um, and I just wanted to touch a little bit with Sadhanam as well, that with Kundalini and rituals and traditions, like you generally wear white um, because it helps extend your aura. Sometimes you, you tend to use a sheepskin because everything, if you start thinking about, is energy. So even the ground that we're sitting on is affecting our energy. So that sheepskin allows us to, to cut off. Do you want to add to it, Sadhanam? Because you know better than I do. It basically can, disconnects our energy from the earth so that we can work on our own. Right? You talk more about that. There's yeah. So yeah. There, this is what, you know, the, the yogis and the, ma the masters that have meditated for so many decades in their caves and things may become super sensitive and aware of energies kind of and and even western scientists are starting to study this stuff the electromagnetic fields of various energetic centers chakras with the whole body like every organ in your body has its own electromagnetic field um the heart is the strongest one that's 16 times stronger than the next one which is your brain which uh in our society a lot of times we're brain 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 thinking and uh, overthinking, kind of overusing that to where we get stressed and exhausted and things. So um, a lot of times we're tapping back into the heart space, but the, certainly the, uh, the positions of the body, uh, like I was kind of mentioning posture, but also you know, just how you're seated um, and what you're seated on will affect how your field interacts or grounds to the Earth's field. Um, there's been some interesting research lately about earthing. You guys know about earthing, where you put your feet on the bare feet on the Earth, um, and it's yeah. it has amazing benefits. It's like people are out there; they're just taking all kinds of pharmaceutical drugs and things to try to get the mental state where they want it, or try to get the body free of pain and things. And it's like, what did what did people do? for millions of years before there was these pharmaceutical drugs. How did, how did we get it by? Using our energy, using the Earth's energy, using natural supplements, plants, herbs, that's, that's really all you need. You need the knowledge of how to do that, which a lot of times has been hidden or lost or suppressed. And so this is what we're trying to do is bring those ways back and share them. But maybe in some ways we weren't ready. I feel like a, us as a culture from like the Piscean to the Aquarian age, we seem more ready for this knowledge. But yes. on top of that, like what you were saying, Sadhanam, with just even singing or dancing or like the thing with Kundalini is it may, it, it is a honed in science. But you take these things and you start realizing through a, a different paradigm that the music you're listening to is actually helping with arithmetic system within your body changing your breath changing your mind i mean the quantum physics behind it is mind-blowing and i think it's really just starting to be studied but um i'm thinking just due to time sadhanam would you be open to doing like a little three minute meditation just so the guys can experience it sure sure yeah okay. um i was thinking of uh i was thinking of like i was doing my sadhana this morning and uh thinking it would be cool to do a little sample. Do we have uh, a couple minutes? Yeah. And yeah. I believe Paul yeah. has a backup just in case. Okay. I've got, I got plenty of time. <laughs> yeah. so, first thing we want to do you know, is get, get grounded, start to lengthen your spine, get a nice proud and stable posture and a balanced spine. So we find first that root, the base of the spine, and your sitting bones are kind of connected and balanced with the spine. Let's roll shoulders back a bit. And lift that heart up. And then bring your palms together. This rubbing motion. This helps to awaken some energy, get it circulating. You have these energetic centers and palms, chakras there. 
get some heat building. And inhale, thumbs up to the third eye. Exhale to your heart. We'll take a deep inhale here. Sigh it out your mouth. <sighs> Do that two more times, in through the nose. Sigh it out. <sighs> Once more. From here, we're going to use a mantra that we do before any meditation, before every class and every home practice, which is like four words, Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo. So I'm sure you've heard of Om. This is O-N-G, Ong. It's just a different pronunciation, a different way of moving the vibration, the energy, and it's connecting you with the universal harmony, the life force that's within all things. So this connects you with your higher self, with the universe, with all beings. We honor that great whole that we're a part of. We honor the golden chain of teachers, so all the teachers that came before us in the lineage and your own inner teacher. So we'll just do this three times. Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo. Inhale. Exhale. A complete exhale. And we'll inhale to tune in. Ong Namo Guru Dev. the spine so draw in the navel squeeze in the sitting bones at the base of the spine sends the energy up exhale release just let your palms face up in your lap just breathe notice how you feel you might feel your heart beating, your breath, the vibration of the mantras. We're going to do a fundamental exercise or warm up that's in a lot of different Kriya sequences. And it involves a breath pattern called breath of fire. And breath of fire, uh, also very common and very clearing for the mind, uh, clears your energy channels, your nostrils, your lungs. Um, it's kind of like charging yourself up. And this is sometimes called aura charge. So breath of fire, it's kind of like a dog panting. Like if you had your tongue out, you'd be like, ah, 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 ah. those active exhales, the navel pumps, ah, 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 like a dog panting, but it's through your nose. And those active exhales, the navel pumps as you expel the breath, and then passive inhales as the navel releases. And it's not about uh, perfectionism, so you don't have to worry if you think you're doing it right or wrong or perfectly or not. Um, we're all just 
getting a little energy boost here. And and there's also, when you're doing that, do you, you're moving your stomach in and out, you're using your diaphragm, like... Right, but the, the navel, like the, the diaphragm will pump automatically. Like if, if you imagine like you're blowing out a candle with your nose, like feel how it automatically pumps inwards. Like you're expelling the breath actively and then passive inhales come in. Okay. You, the mudra, the position, you draw the fingertips into the pads of the palms and stretch your arms up to 60 degrees. And keep the shoulders relaxed kind of drawing the chin inwards. This is like antenna. This is like opening up your vessel to receive the energy of the universe. And your antenna that are channeling energy. And from here, we'll close the eyes, roll them up to the third eye, and begin breath of fire. Keep that steady. We're gonna do about two minutes. start to become challenged you don't give up you keep it up you stay neutral as you greet the heat and the challenge you stay steady and your energy will rise up to meet the challenge Just a little bit more, noticing sensations, energy starting to flow, the change in the consciousness. And inhale, stretch up, hold the breath bringing the thumb tips together and the fingers straight up. Stretch the spine, engage the mula band, root lock, draw that navel in, send the energy up. Exhale, slowly releasing. And let the palms face up in your lap, on your knees, draw the first finger and thumb together. Feel the pulse there. And close your eyes and just breathe. Meditating at the third eye, noticing how you feel. So this is a small taste of, of little energy boost, a little mental function boost. And you can feel kind of how your mind is functioning, how your body is functioning, just compared to five minutes ago before we tuned in and did this little exercise. You might feel more energy, a little uh, 
kind of boost in positivity, clarity, maybe more of a sense of well being. How do you guys feel? You got that? Yeah. And this is very, it's a simple exercise, you know, uh, and it's very short. Do you want to say something? Oh, I was just going to say, um, I just feel very present. Mm, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times, like really the vast majority of the time, our attention is somewhere else. You know, it's on mm. something external or it's uh, on some something we're watching something we're being fed and this is time when you go within and you're just working with your own energy so like a lot of time you know most people wake up and they like pound some coffee or something you know to you kind of people are kind of dependent on these external things to get your energy but that's you know that's not sustainable because then your adrenals get drained and you get a crash during the day so personally, I've, I've never uh, been a coffee drinker. Uh, I tried it for like less than a year, uh, about a year ago. And I, I experienced those crashes and just all these side effects. And I was like, wow, I really like cannot. <laughs> but, you know, this type of practice you can do in the mornings, you can get energized with no side effects, positive side effects, I'd say. So, yeah, did, did you have any other um, questions or comments about anything? So, with that, I know this, is, this may or may not be off topic, but in, does this, uh, promote or help uh, astral projection and stuff like that? Yes. You know, if, yeah. Go yeah. No, go ahead, please. Yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting topic uh, I've kind of dabbled with. Um, you know, personally, I would say as you're strengthening your third eye awareness, which really like any and every meditation will do to some extent, you're strengthening your perception and kind of your experience of your soul, your mind, um, it's going to improve your control, your ability to guide those types of experiences. Okay. Um, trying to think like particular uh, meditations and things that we do. There's, there's one there's a few uh, that come to mind where, you know, a lot of times we're meditating at the third eye and it's like awareness of your mind or your higher perceptive abilities. Um, but there's also the crown chakra above the third eye, which there are some uh, kriyas and meditations that I can think of where, you know, you're doing the, the kriya, you're moving the energy through the body, you're doing all these exercises and then, a lot of times at the end, you roll the eyes all the way back and up, and then you're, that's like what's known as the 10th gate. It's where your soul comes in. So I, I have a little 10-month-old uh, baby, and she has a little soft spot right there because the skull hasn't formed yet. And that's, that's where the soul comes in. That's where the soul leaves at the end of life. And uh, when you roll the eyes all the way up and you project, there's um, sometimes you just find yourself in the stars, in the galaxy. Yeah. 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 Fun stuff. When I was younger, so like I was like, there was a handful of times when I was younger and I didn't know exactly what it was until I started reading when I got older. And when I got older, it was a lot harder for me to do. Mm -hmm. Like when I was younger, I was so scared because I did it so often. I'd be like looking down on my body because I'd feel pop at the top of my head and I'd be, you know, floating above my body, looking down at it. And I was scared to go to sleep. And I, I had insomnia because of it, because I, I didn't know what it was at the time. Wow. Now it's so hard for me to do 
but you know, still do it like here and there. So I want some help. Yeah, that's that. that's cool. Yeah, um, when we're between birth and age like seven or eight, the pineal gland is said to be completely open, functioning at its max, uh, and then it starts to crystallize. It starts to close up. Um, it's part of the reason why children have this these third eye experiences. They can see other beings, uh, other dimensions, which a lot of times we'll refer to as imaginary friends or imagination. But, you know, who's to say what they're seeing and what's really there or not? So uh, children, yeah, a lot of times, I don't know if you were in that or, or older than that um, when you had, were having out of body. I was, it was between the time of like, I can just remember it so vividly. So from the time I was five to like 12. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially that five to eight and then, yeah, even up until 12, the pineal is functioning. That's that's like, you know, one of the glands that's associated with the third eyes, the pineal and the pituitary. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, it's cool. You even had the experience of the crown chakra. Yeah. My uh, business partner that I started the the studio with um she also had completely open third eye as she was growing up she was having a, a communication with spirits and things around her um and uh, she got like put into treatment and things to you know because they're like well that's impossible by our western understanding of the brain or reality yeah. Uh, but you know, and then it, it closed up and it kind of tapered off, but even now she can connect with the spirit world and she does channeling, um, like ascended master channeling and things like that. She's got a channeling mentorship program actually that starts tomorrow, um, where people are going through this like six week series and being taught to channel to That's crazy. That's, well, that's cool to be able to do it. Yeah. Uh, when we like when we teach and we tune in uh, and we connect with the golden chain, we have like this guidance of the uh, gurus, you know, the ascended master teachers that came before and Yogi Bhajan and people like that. Um, so when a lot of times when I'm teaching, I'm speaking, I'm not, but I'm not speaking, you know, it's like, the messages of the universe that are coming through. Um, and then I have friends that do actual like channeling, which is more like trance channeling. You know, they go into a meditation and then a whole different voice comes out. And is, it's, it's pretty interesting to see. It's always just these messages of love and guidance and truth. They're very profound. I don't know. I've, I've realized even when teaching, that it was mandatory to do our mantra beforehand of I'm not a woman, I'm not a man, I'm not a person, I'm a teacher. And there's something about that aspect that really does open you up and create this channel of you just being a teacher and your ego kind of lets go and allows this flow to happen. I, it's powerful. Yeah. You know, I wanted to let yeah. you know. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to add to that. Um, yeah, we do the teacher's oath, and this is something that you learn in kundalini training that really is not covered uh, nearly as much in any other type of yoga training because we have, like, standards. We have um, these, a lot of ethical guidelines and things that are, you know, what does it mean to be a teacher? And a lot of times when people do a teacher training, it, you know, they might not be expecting to be a teacher one day, but you're learning the, the persona, the role, what it means, how to really reach people and help people. What, what the world needs now is not just more followers, you know, training you need leaders. An interesting little... Uh, bit of my own uh, story that uh, I was working for OSU. I was working at a computer lab and uh, helping people make videos and things. 
and doing multimedia. And then I had a really eccentric older lady who was a uh, uh, the theology major. She was like, uh, you know, studied philosophy and religions. And I was helping her make this video about Aristotle, you know, and then she brought in a friend of hers. So this, this older woman came in and she was wearing a turban and I had never seen a white person wearing a turban, much less a woman, like this old woman. So she was the first Kundalini teacher I ever met. Her name is Satkartar Kar. And she started talking about philosophy and spirituality and, and probably also about uh, Yogi Bhajan and Kundalini and we were making this video. And I think I was just barely starting to get into practicing yoga in my college classes. And she asked, she wanted to read my numerology. So she, I gave her just my birthday and she started adding up the numbers. And she said, wow, you, you have like these master numbers, like you're, you're a teacher, you're gonna be a teacher. And I was like, I don't know, I'm just barely like starting to practice yoga. I don't know, who am I to teach others, you know? And she told me that and I kept practicing, I kept having these awakenings and feeling how powerful this stuff was and how beneficial it is. And then, you know, it's like five years later that I, I decided I was sitting next to this lake and the sun was rising and I was out on this uh, backpacking trip with my friend and I was meditating. I was like, this is so amazing. The greatest thing I could possibly do with my life would be to share this and teach this. So then uh, the teacher training that Beth and I did came to Cincinnati. There was a Facebook group that I was kind of like my idea initiative to create. And that was how they found us. And they posted this thing, it was New Year's, New Year's Eve. And I was with my first Kundalini teacher and I saw it and I was, I was gearing up to like travel, have to travel to Chicago and New York or like my teacher flew to Colorado once a month for her teacher training because you know, that's how much of a, a calling and a dedication that, that people have. And, and then it was like Cincinnati, that's an hour and a half away. I was working full time and I still was able to swing it. And uh, now it's in Columbus, so even even better. <laughs> what is your life path number? Life path. I want to say three or four, but there's um, there's this tantric numerology. I can look it up right now because uh, it's on the Three H O website. It's uh, Yogi Bhajan's organization. It's kind of like the the home base for kundalini stuff and yeah, you just put in your birthday free numerology reading just as a quick heads up i have to get going but i got a little thing that popped up that said because this is my first zoom meeting it can go on forever so now it's up to you guys i'm just going to leave my computer running and have to run into a classroom here but i want to thank you sadhanam Big time, I wanted to ask you, because I know that you're facilitating now level one teacher training. I wanted to ask you now, just because it came to me, if you'll figure out something with bringing a level two in as well. Like I know there's five pieces. We've already done mind and meditation in Cincinnati, but maybe the relationship one to consider. Yeah, so so we're, this training that we're bringing with Shakta Kar, it'll be the first level one training that to my knowledge has ever been done in Columbus. And Shakta also teaches the level twos that um, they're like six days, either a six day immersion or more likely it's uh, two weekends. Uh, and I, that, that's definitely on my long-term goals that would love to have her so we can take our level twos and maybe in a couple of years or something. Well, maybe um, like May. <laughs> yeah, they have, <laughs> They've done a couple of them in Cincinnati. Uh, I really wanted to go to that mind and meditation. Did you do that one with, uh, yeah, with um, Guru Charan? Yeah. Oh, I'm just jealous. <laughs> you He's been. amazing. Yeah. 
this guy, you guys, is like, I can't even explain it. He does business work for CEOs of, I mean, he, oh my God, I can't even get into it because I have to focus on something else. He's written a book that was Mind and Meditation that was amazing. Like, yeah. Sada, I'm going to speak to it. All right, guys, I got to run. Keep talking as long as you want. Um, I'm sure at least another half hour you're good if, if you are up to it with your all time. But uh, Satnam, you all, and I'll talk to you soon. Uh, Satnam. Thank you so much, Beth. Have a good day. If it works out, maybe we can do this next week at noon, too. Time or – I know Shaktakar, you, you talk about it and let me know, okay? Right. Uh, so next Friday. Yeah, I think I'm available then, too. Okay. That'd be awesome. Um, bye. I'm just Thank gonna... you. Bye. Thank you, Bye, Beth. guys. Love you all. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you. Is that is that what you go by, AJ? No, this is my Facebook. I don't really use. It's so old. <laughs> yeah. I go by James. Okay. My parents call me AJ. Yeah, my my parents were just in town with the baby, uh, past few days, and they call me by my English name but I tend to go by my spiritual name that was that you get through 3HO. So that was actually one of my questions that came up for me. Um, how did your name come to you? Yeah, so um, there's a lot of uh, work that you do with, like, like I said, like self-realization. So that's kind of like, you know, your self in image and our goals in life and things like that and you know the, the the clothes that we wear the way that we speak and think and act and and our names that we go by you know have a lot of impact on that too so um it's of course it's not like a required thing and there's also no uh requirement to get a spiritual name like a lot of times people will ask me like do you think i'm ready to you know to to graduate and, and get my name and my, you know, to wear white and stuff. And it's like anyone, really anyone in the world can use this technology and get a spiritual name and you don't have to go by it, but you can know it and you can, you know, so it's also kind of based off of your astrology and your numerology that um, you just enter that into the website and it goes to Narinjan Kar Khalsa, who was trained by Yogi Bhajan. She, she was like his personal secretary assistant and um, they calculate, uh, I, I was looking at my tantric numerology too, but they, uh, I think it, they find where it refers to in various like Shabid, like, like mantras and things and, they get your your spiritual name, um, so so that was what I did uh, back in like when I was doing my training in 2014, and um, basically you know, all women will get the last name of power, so like divine light of the universe, then the princess it means like lioness princess that you know that, that becomes like your spiritual identity um and my name that i got sada or sada means always or eternal and then nam like you know we say sat nam uh nam is like name it means like the the divine names sacred sound vibrations of the universe um so it and then sing is the last name that men get which means like a lion or lion of god so it's uh, Sadhanam Singh, it's the, the lion who's always meditating, remembering, chanting the holy names to remember his divine personality, something like that. Okay. Yeah, and I love to chant and sing, uh, like I have kirtan groups that I play with and stuff, so it's pretty fitting for me. That's awesome. Yeah, my life path number to answer your question from before is a path of three. And it says, 
My, it says your satisfaction and fulfillment in this life will come to you through making sure that others are taken care of. In order to create equality in all situations of life, you must take care of all those around you, always be concerned for their needs. It's sort of like being a spiritual father or mother of Big Papa who sees to the needs of all, sees that they are fed, clothed, etc. Your own fulfillment lies in being a caretaker of all others, which is also really uh, resonates, really fitting for me and the kind of rules that I involved with. So I'll send you that link too. So I was just adding you. I'm going to send you guys a group text. Okay, cool. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, yeah. pleasure. Have a good one, you guys. All right, thank you. You too. All right, see you guys. Bye.